Yeah. Okay, we are on the record in 2019, CR 228, State of Kansas versus Rodney Lee McGuire. Yes, ma'am. Jill Gillette for the state, Mr. McGuire in person, in custody and pro se. This is not a first appearance on charges. That was back in 2019. Looks like the defendant failed to appear August 9th, the 22, which was about the fourth hearing in this matter. February 14th, another hearing, first appearance. Uh, defendant applying for attorney, had an attorney appointed. That's on a show cause. So February 14th, you are here, sir, on a first appearance for a warrant to show cause why your probation should not be revoked. Your attorney was appointed, and we set it over to March 7th, 2023, but you failed to appear again. So your attorney is Richard Paul, is that correct? I have no idea, ma'am. Well, let me ask my assistant, Missy, it is Richard Paul. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And uh, if the jailer would help you have his contact, who is the jailer today? Mayla. Okay. If you could make sure he gets the information for his attorney, Richard Paw. And Missy, if you'll let Mr. Paw know that he is in jail. And when, is, when can we do his show cards? Do what? I don't want him. I don't want him taken off on me. So the sooner the better. I don't want to take off. I have congestive heart failure. I can't take off anywhere, ma'am. I have severe health issues. I've been in the hospital twice since I've been here. I, I, if you could just give me a, a fine, I could pay it. And well, you have an attorney, so you need to go through your attorney. And uh, there is an allegation that you violated your probation. I, I didn't even know. I, I'm on probation there. If we could just continue my probation where I live, I didn't even know. Please, ma'am. Hang on. We can set it October 10th at 3.30. Your last bond was... $100. Well, I show that January 25th of 2023, a $2,500 $2, cash or surety bond was posted by someone named Pitts out of Carthage, Missouri. Huh? I don't know anybody in Carthage. I'm looking at a bond. You're Rodney Lee McGuire, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I mean, that may have been the bondsman. Crawford County and Greenwood County had a had a warrant and a, and it looks like he posted a, a bond of twenty five hundred dollars and again someone named Pitts out of Carthage Missouri allegedly that, posted it. That would have been the bondsman. And then you failed to appear. I didn't. No, yeah, I'm sorry. Please, ma'am, I beg you. Where do you normally live? Pittsburgh, Kansas. That's where I live. And I'm on probation there. If you guys can just continue my probation over there, I wouldn't have no problems. Here's, here's the problem with that, Judge. And I've been trying to be quiet while he's been whining. I'm sorry. He was sentenced January 21st of 2020 to non-reporting probation to allow him to be in Crawford County and to pay fines, which is what he's asking to do. And he didn't do it. And yes gotten more issues and we motioned to revoke his non-reporting probation in July and he failed to appear for his rev revocation first appearance and then his bond was changed to 2500 and he failed to appear on a $2,500 bond in September so that was the first failure to appear then he was in custody and pro se begging to get out. And he got a thousand dollar OR bond in July of 21 because he had disappeared for almost a year, 10 months. And we gave him a pay or appear and he was to pay just a hundred dollars and didn't. I didn't. And failed to report to his probation officer as directed. And so he 
was supposed to be here and we gave him a continuance to August 27th of 21 and he failed to appear again and was given a no bond hold to see the judge. That was failure to appear number two. Then in September of 21, we had him back in custody again and he was supposed to be in Pittsburgh and residing over there. And he was put on reporting probation. He was required to get a job. He was supposed to make a weekly payment and be put on six months probation. Again, he did not do anything. And then we ended up having him appear in July. And we talked about his congestive heart failure then. And he was supposed to have had stuff done between all these other court dates to take care of his congestive heart failure and hadn't. Then Judge Sanders saw him when you were gone in August of 22, and he failed to appear at that time, and he was given a bond, bench warrant bond forfeiture, and it was $2,500 cash surety on that bond from Judge Sanders. In October, we had certified mailed him at the residence and information he gave us on his bond, and he failed to be here for his forfeiture motion, which it was his failure to appear number four. Then we got to February of this year where he was supposed to appear before the court on another bench warrant and he called but didn't come to court. So then he appeared February 20, February 14th and we can't even get through this last motion to revoke because he keeps not showing up. He was uh, set over for March 7th, and he failed to appear again. Number five of a failure to appear, plus there was the one he called in. So if you count that one as a failure to appear because he called and didn't show up, there would be six. Otherwise, there would be five. So he failed to appear March 7th of 23, and he got the no bond hold that he has today. He's not paid anything in all that time. He's not taking care of his court dates. He keeps failing to appear on the bonds that we give him. He keeps claiming he's in and out of the hospitals all the time. And no verification of anything can be given. And basically, I'm at the point where I have five for sure failures to appear in one call. So I am at a loss of what to do with this gentleman. Um, because we've given him multiple chances, even had him on non-reporting probation with a payment plan set up, set him up another payment plan to help him, have him report to probation, and he just disappears and never shows up to the probation officers. And so he's not reporting to probation, he ain't paying anything, and he keeps running off on his warrants. I understand he has congestive heart failure, and we've had to take him to the hospital a couple of times, and that's expensive to the taxpayers. But at this point, I don't know what else to do with him because we're not getting anywhere with his probation reporting nor to anything else. And he's supposed to be on probation in Pittsburgh. Well, if he's got warrants out, they would arrest him when he went in. And then when he keeps getting arrested with us, he has stuff with them. So he's got to take care of his responsibilities in both counties, Crawford County and Greenwood County. His underlying sentence is 120 days. I don't know what to do with him. Do I don't know. How many days he served altogether? Uh, I was trying to look that up while he was talking, Judge, on all the warrants we've had. Um, but we keep, bless you, Judge, <laughs> keep you. Uh, giving him bonds because of his health concerns. But his health concerns aren't helping us in having him report on his probations. He just keeps running off and absconding. And absconding is not following the court's orders. It's more than just about not paying his fines and costs. If that was the only problem, I'd send it to collections, but that's not the only problem here. We have a man who keeps not showing up for court. We can't get through his probation revocations because he keeps running off and he won't report to his reporting probation officers. So, you know, I can look up his exact jail credit, um, but frankly, he just keeps running off and he's not trustworthy to let back out every time anymore. That's, that's a lot of failures to appear in one case. 
Well, and what he's been paying the bondsman, the 10% to the bondsman, he could have easily paid this case off long ago. Because, for instance, uh, that one bondsman alone, he, that 2500 he would have had to pay $250. I can pay my bond off tomorrow, ma'am. Your bond or your case? Uh, my my my, my uh, fine. I could pay my fine off tomorrow. My sister is going to loan me the money to pay it all off tomorrow. Well, it looks like they've added the is looks like the uh, Department of Revenue may have added a suspension fee to that because you have got your balance jacked up to three thirty nine. Yeah, yeah, and they know they know how much it is. They looked it up. I could pay three thirty nine tomorrow, ma'am. All right, and Miss Gillette, did you have the? Uh, did you get a chance to figure that? Or to get the jail? I'm writing it down right now, Judge. Right. Actually, uh, the file says this has already been sent to collections, so that's going to be an issue if he pays tomorrow. Mister McGuire, when you were sentenced on January twenty first of twenty twenty. You had uh, two other cases, 19 CR 226 and 19 CR 227. Did you take care of those two cases? Are they resolved? I, I believe so, because I have no idea what you're talking about, ma'am. I'm on probation right now for a case in Pittsburgh. And that's why I was trying. I was trying to have you guys transfer the probation there so I could see them both at once because I've had no problems there. Okay. And have all your cases been drugs? Uh, I've only had two cases my whole life, ma'am. And yes, they're both, but not anymore because of my congestive heart failure. They were both old cases. They just didn't charge me for a long time because of the COVID. Were they both marijuana? Or, I know mine's the one I have here is marijuana. Uh, no, the other one is the other stuff. Methamphetamine? Yes, ma'am. I have that he has 21 days to today in all of the arrests he's had. Because most of them he bonds out within 24 hours if there's a bond. The only time he has stayed in custody when there was a no bond. Well, I show just on three of his bonds alone that he absconded on. He's paid six hundred dollars to a bondsman. I don't know, uh, that's not money. I'm jail credit days. He has twenty one days. Yeah, I heard you. I'm just saying that he, he could have paid his case and he served enough time that I'm. And I will pay it tomorrow. I'll pay it in full. I promise you. Well, it's already been sent to collections. I would have to get it out of collections for you. That, I mean, if you would, please. And I, like I said, I could pay the whole 339 or 330, whatever it is, tomorrow. Okay, well, just a moment, sir. Ms. Gillette, okay. in his journal entry, it mentions uh, court costs, attorney fees, lab fees, joint and several with uh, 19 CR 226 and 19 CR 227. He says those aren't his cases. Were those co defendants? We don't usually have joint. Yeah, that, that would have been my cousin and his wife. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what are we going to do? You've got congestive heart failure. You've had to go to the hospital twice now. Is that? I've also got diabetes and high blood pressure. All right. You've only served. Uh, you said how many days, Miss Gillette? 20, 21 days that he served out of 120. All right. So the allegations against you are that you have not reported as directed. You have not paid as directed and you failed to come to court five or six times, determining on whether we count the one that you set up on your own and didn't come for. I will go to my probation. I promise okay. you. I, I have you, to, need to, and... you probably need to talk to your attorney that's been court appointed. Okay. And since you didn't report to probation, they weren't able to give you UAs or apply any of the other I, I will. Conditions. I will do every week. I will take one every week. I mean, every day. I don't care. All right. Well, I can't have your probation hearing without your attorney here. So we're going to have to do that. 
It's your attorney here. Missy, can we move that up any sooner at all with his health conditions as such? Please, ma'am, or at least give me a, 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 a what do they call it, a bond, please? No OR bond. Well, I don't know if I can trust you on a bond, an OR please, bond. Please, ma'am, I'm on probation there, so I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm, I'm just continuing my probation there. All right. So are you on felony probation then, where if you blow it, you'll go to prison? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gillette, your position on bonds? I, I've heard most of it, but uh, are you opposed? What's, what Please, are your ma'am. recommendation for bonds? I know. I'm pretty clear that I can't get him to come to court without warrants. I, if you want to put a GPS monitor on him, we know where he is. And maybe hey, that's you can do that. You can, you can do that. Put an ankle bracelet on me. I don't care. I'd rather, I, I'd rather I'd rather have his hearing very soon, Missy. Where when is the soonest you can get his attorney notified and squeeze this in? You know, I I generally try to help those that help themselves. He just ain't helped himself. <laughs> I understand. I, I understand. Please, please. I understand. So, Missy, when's the soonest you can squeeze his attorney? Will, his that? attorney will be here. Please. His attorney will be here next Tuesday, September 26th at 3.30 for another case. We can put it on then. September 26th. That's a week from today. At Say that time again, 3.30? Yes, on the misdemeanor docket at 3.30. All right. That's when I'm going to squeeze you in there for a uh, court to show cause hearing. I'm not going to get to the home. And please, ma'am. I'm going to I'm going to give you a bond. It's thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Well, you may not be thanking me when you hear what the amount is. I understand you have two uncles or somebody here. Who are the folks? That my are here? father, my father, and my uncle. Okay, dad, I take care on. of my dad. All right. Missy, are they where they can be unmuted? The gentleman listening from the courthouse, can you lift your head, please? Okay. Can, and do you see, does, do you know how to use a computer at all, sir? No, he doesn't. I'll run up there and unmute him. Thank you, Missy. Is that your uncle or your father there? That's my father. You said you helped take care of him, did you say? Yes, ma'am. I take care of him. What is his health condition? Uh, he all kinds of health conditions. He is disabled. Um, when I was a kid, he got shot in the head and in the chest in a drive by in Kansas City when I was little. And he has short term memory loss real bad. Um, he has diabetes. Uh, he, he he was never supposed to walk again. He got ran over on Truman and 435 in Kansas City when I was little and he was never supposed to walk again. He bar He can barely walk. And he's just he's got all kinds of things wrong with him. And I'm I'm his caretaker. I'm I, I, I live there with him. Me and him have a house together. He has skill workers, but like I, I'm there when they're not. And that's in Pittsburgh, did you tell yes, me? Yes, ma'am. In Pittsburgh, yes. All right. Uh what's his name? Richard. Richard McGuire. Mr. Richard McGuire, if you can hear me, would you raise your head, please? He tried. He can't hold it up straight. That's my oh. uncle talking. All right. And can the other gentleman sit closer to him so I can see you as well? Hello, sir. What is your name? David Bennett. Caleb Bennett and David. David Bennett? Yes. All right. And you are brother to the gentleman next to you? Brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. So, okay. You're married to the sister. Were you the co-defendant in these cases? No. You weren't the... Uncle and aunt that had the drugs with him. Okay. No, that was his cousin and his wife. Cousin and wife. I thought he said uncle. Maybe I must have misunderstood or forgot. But in any event, where do you live in relation Pittsburgh. to this? Okay. Do you have fairly frequent contact with them? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> okay. I don't travel very much either. I'm not in that great of health. Okay, you're not either. Okay. Well, he's had $2,500 bonds and they didn't get him here. 
I ordered on this warrant that he'd be held without bond because like Ms. Gillette said, we just can't get him back to court. And I need to make sure he's going to be here next Tuesday. My uncle will make sure I'm here, I promise you. Well, let your uncle speak for himself on that, sir. That's you... debatable because I paid for the gas to come out here this time. And can you make a commitment to get him here? Will he respond to that? Do you have that kind of authority over him? His dad says he can do it. I can bring him. No, I don't think you can bring him if you can't raise your ha head with all due respect, sir. <laughs> we'll I, find a way to get him here. Are you willing to sign off on a bond for him? Depends on the bond. Well, I'm thinking a $5,000 bond and somebody would have to put up five hundred. dollars I don't have it. All right. Does his father have it? Well, we're both on Social Security. Okay. Anybody else in the family have it? No. Poor family. What was that, sir? We're poor. Well, I, I'm sorry that that's your situation. That's never fun for anybody, but, but you're doing the best you can, and I appreciate that. And Mr. Robbie Thank McGuire, you. you don't have any income? You don't have a job? No, I can't. My heart doctor says I can't work. And my oh, sister's going to loan me the money for the bond. She already he said she have heart condition, heart failure. You can't work at all. Okay. My sister's going to loan me the money. Uh, okay. Uh, the sister. She's not here. Work? Where does she, she work? She works at the correction facility in um, Cherokee Co County in, in Columbus, Kansas. Okay. She is a, a guard there at the county jail. To the uncle, do you know this sister he's talking about? Yes. You think she can do that for him? Yes. If she says she That's will, she yes. will. So you said she's going to pay your case off, which is three ninety nine, and you say she's going to pay a five hundred dollar bond. I, I I don't know about no eight hundred and something, but she could definitely pay my bond, and then we can work on my case getting paid off. Well, I'll tell you what, it really. It just makes no sense to me that folks can always come up with money to give a bondsman several hundred dollars, but yet they can't come up with it to give the court. I, that just amazes me. Most of his court dates have been in the middle of the month where everybody's already broke. I see. But it's not just him. I see that across the board. People do it all the time. I know. Um. Well, I'm going to set your bonds, sir. Ugh. Man, I don't want your sister to pay your bond and not the case, just because she's not helping you as much. But, Mr. McGuire, I'm setting your bond at $5,000. That's 500 with the bondsman, right? That's between you and your bondsman. Okay. But if you give that bondsman $500, that would pay your case off. You know that. Well, if I pay my case off, do I still get out? Well, there are more issues than just money in this case, sir. So, no, I can't tell. I can $500 cash or surety is your bond. Your case is set for a revocation hearing with your attorney to be present September 26th at 3.30. And I'm sure Ms. Gillette is beside herself thinking I'm crazy for letting you go and on 5000 that we won't see you again for another year. And so help me, she better not be right. You will have to have an ankle monitor though this time. Okay, no problem. Well, it's gotta be paid for, they're not free. You have to have it set up before you leave the jail. How much is that? I don't know. <laughs> but you let your, you contact your attorney before you leave the jail. Okay. You have the monitor on when you leave the jail. Okay. And you let your probation officer, is it probation or community corrections in Crawford County? Uh, I, it's corrections, I think. I'm not really sure. It's a felony. So, like, I think it's corrections. When was the last time you saw your officer? 
I was going to see her when they arrested me for this. So last Wednesday. You contact her as soon as you get out and tell her everything that's going on in Butler County. I will, ma'am. I mean, uh, in Greenwood County. Greenwood County. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Ms. Gillette? I can't think of anything else, Judge. Normally I would, uh, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, Ms. Gillette. I get it completely, and frankly, she's right. Can't get a hold of Casey. Person. Sorry. Who's Casey? Who's Casey, your probation officer in Crawford? No, my sister. All right. Well, just remember, she's not the one that did the drugs. She's not the one that failed to come to court. So you make sure you start taking responsibility for yourself. I'm trying, ma'am. All right. And call Richard Paul, your attorney. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. You may go, sir. Will you hand me my screen box? I know you've done your part. It's not fair. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you hear it, ma'am? How much no, longer will you suffer? Ma'am? Can you hear it? No, no. Okay. Uh, Don't give up. I have no, no patience for that. Trust me, out of the day, I'm sitting up here. I'm the one that needs to drink.